Okay, so we're going to look at uh, an example for linear regression, or chapter 12. Uh, here's our first example. The following table lists the birth weights in pounds, x, and the lengths in inches, y, for a set of newborn babies. Um, here's our table of values, x and y. Find the equation of the least squared linear regression line. So we're going to utilize Excel to help us find this line. It's the line that best estimates each of the data points. Um, and it's an equation. We're going to call it uh, y hat. So I'm going to copy this table over into Excel, which I've already done. You can also just, um, I notice some people are having a hard time copying and pasting out of the wild map. The tables are pretty small, so you could actually just uh, recreate your table in Excel if you wanted. Here I've copied and pasted. <clears throat> then I'm going to highlight all those cells, including the X and Y cell at the top. I'm going to go to insert and create a scatter plot. So it's this little picture here. Um, or I can open up this chart option, see all the charts. Um, and I want, <clears throat> this is the one I want a scatter plot. I'll just kind of flip through them a little bit for you. But we want a scatter plot and just say OK. Um, so there's our points, and you know you might check. We have 10 data points, so we should have 10 points here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you click on any one of the points, it should highlight over there. I guess it doesn't. That's okay. Um, notice there's no line on here, so you want to see this trend line. You need to go to this little plus up here to add an element to the chart, and you want to add a trend line. Click on it. There it is. And we want to add a linear trend line. So <clears throat> it will <clears throat> pick linear if they're close enough to in a line <clears throat> that it can figure it out. Otherwise, you might, um, you know, you'll just, it'll automatically pick linear for us for our problems. So <clears throat> there's our line. Now we need its equation. So if I double click on that line, I'll open up the format trend line options over here. <clears throat> These are the different kinds of trend lines we could use. We want linear. And if I scroll down to the bottom of this, it gives me the option to display the equation and to display the R squared value on the chart. <clears throat> so you can see over here on my chart, there's my equation, and there's my what I call my R squared. I want to see if I can make these a little bigger. 16 point font. OK. There they are. And that's what we need to enter in for our first part. And the question, this line, y equals 0.8144x plus 12.343. Go back over here. That's the answer to that first part. I'm going to call it y hat. Um, that depends on what text you're using, but it's a pretty common notation. Uh, it's the sam it's the the, the line that's going to be used to estimate values based on this sample data. So y can be estimated using the equation 0.18x plus 12.343. Uh, the correlation coefficient is a value r. Um, the closer in absolute value that r lies to 1, the better a linear relationship that we have. So the more closely these elements are in linear relationship to each other, the closer R will be to either positive one or negative one. Um, and R's sign, either positive or negative, is determined by the whether our line has positive or negative slope. So if I look back at my picture, we see that R squared is zero, 0 0.6368. And we see that our line here has positive slope. So we have to do a couple of things. We have to take the square root of 0 0.6368. So equals square root 0 0.6368. That would tell us the absolute value of R. Um, I'll go a few less decimal places. Um, and the fact that our line goes up means that our line has positive slope, goes up from left to right. So that would mean that R is positive. If 
the line were going down or had negative slope, then it would be negative 7.98. Going back to our problem over here. So r squared was 0 0.6368. r is the square root of that, 0 0.798. And it's a positive value since the line has positive slope. And you know, this is you can see in the picture that these points pretty much lie in a line. As the birth weight increases, the length of the baby increases. So that makes sense. And then and this R value is, is you know 0.8, that's relatively close to one. Okay, use your line to predict the length of an eight-pound baby. So this line can be used to predict lengths of babies, you know, really anywhere in between here pretty well. And then if we if we travel left or right of the data, the line is good for a little bit further, but not too far. It depends on what the scenario is. Um, you know, we're gonna use our line to predict values. Um, if I went too far on the to the right, meaning the, the poundage of the baby went up, say to 15 pounds, I mean, that's a very big baby. And so we would expect, I don't know what would happen with the length of the baby, you know, would this line still be accurate? It's not clear, probably not. Uh, if you go smaller than the smallest point, which is three pounds, again, you run into trouble because a three pound baby is, is a very small baby. Um, to be smaller than three pounds probably means, you know, the baby is coming early, um, potentially much earlier. So that, that leads into the, one of the later parts of the problem. So we'll get there in a second. Okay, but in the first part here, how do we use our line to predict the length of an eight pound baby? We just need to replace this X up here in the equation with eight. So y hat would equal 0 0.1844 times 8 plus the 12.343. That's our equation. Plug that in and we get 18.855. Or the model predicts that an 8-pound baby would weigh 18.86, or sorry, an 8-pound baby would be 18.86 inches long. Um, and this model would be relatively good predictive predictability between sort of, you know, three and 10 here, or maybe two and a half and 12, um, much smaller than three. I think this model gets in trouble. So let's see what this next part says. Would this equation be accurate for determining the length of a premature baby weighing 1.2 pounds at birth? Um, again, I've sort of just said, um, one would have to assume that the birth weights given were for pregnancies that sort of went to full term. And so this model would no, most likely not be accurate for a premature baby. So no, it, it, this model probably would not be worth, uh, even worth applying to this 1.2 pound premature baby. Um, similarly, this model would have a hard time, you know, 10 is a pretty, 10 pounds is a pretty big baby. So 10, maybe 12 pounds, anything above sort of 12 pounds would sort of be like, okay, now you're, you're looking at a very small percentage of babies that are on the on the on the outsides of those values. So the model gets less and less um, predictive the farther away that you get from the data. Okay, so that's it. Um, I'll just recap this problem. Um, we take our data and plug it into Excel to get our the equation of the least squares linear regression line or the line that best estimates the data. So the way I did that was I used the insert button and I chose a scatter plot. Oops. Well, I don't have the right thing highlighted, but you have to highlight the cells. And then you go to insert and then you choose the scatter plot. Um, once you have your scatter plot, you can double click on it to get this plus sign up here to figure out what elements you want in the chart. And we want our trend line. There that my line disappeared, there my line comes back in. And then all we need to do is modify this trend line options over here so that we can see the equation. Um, a couple of us will notice on homework, display equation on the chart, display the R squared on the chart. Um, sometimes we won't have enough decimal places here because um, if this, you know, if, if it'll, it'll show a certain number of digits right now. So if I need more decimal places for homework, for example, 
Um, what I need to do, hang on one second. Okay, so I'm trying to get additional decimal places up here in my equation. Um, I sent out a PDF that talks about that. How do you display more digits for your trend line? So it says open the worksheet that contains the chart. Um, right click on the trend line or the R squared text and then click format trend label. So this is for the Office Excel uh, 2700. If you're on a Mac, uh, you might have to double click that in this box. So I think we kind of go into this box. We're going to right click and then go down here to format trend line label. If you can't find this, um, maybe just do a search. If you're on a Mac, do a search in uh, Google search for how to format the trend line label in Excel. We're going to go there, and it's going to give us some options over here. Um, under category, we're going to go to number, and now it'll ask us how many decimal places we want to use. So notice it went to two. So that's a lot of times if it's not enough decimal places, we might need to go up to three or four for homework. And there's more decimal places for our trend line labels. So again, that was by, I found that by double, well, I, I, I just went through the PDF that I sent out giving instructions, but um, <laughs> again, you can just double click in here, right click in the little box where the label is, and then format trend line label, uh, go to category here, find the numbers, and either increase or decrease the number of decimal places. And then I'm gonna do another example maybe um, from homework that looks at how you can copy and paste out of a horizontal table. And then going back to our original problem here, uh, just to kind of finish it up, we find the least squares linear regression line, we find the value of R where R squared is given, so we take the square root of that, it's positive if our line has in, uh, is increasing or has positive slope and it's negative otherwise you if it was negative you'd have to put the negative sign in front and then we can use this equation to predict values as long as they're not too far away from the data so eight pounds is right in the middle of the data we plug it in we get 18.86 inches and then the last part is sort of saying no this data would not this line would not be good for predicting the weights of premature babies all right